So let's kind of role play. I'll be customer. You're your sales rep. Mm-hmm. You're educating me on, okay, here's the three options. Mm-hmm. Walk me through what that would look like. Okay. So um, litigation, you understand what it means to file a lawsuit. So an attorney, you would hire an attorney and they would represent you and they stand in your shoes and they speak on your behalf. The insurance company hires a lawyer and many times they're able to uh, bring the claim to resolution and settle the claim without having to actually go to court. Most of the time they can do that. If the insurance company continues to be unreasonable, then they litigate and it goes to court and it's a lawsuit. And uh, it's a very effective way. And many states, the insurance company, if the consumer is correct, uh, and they, the insurance company should have paid, and they w- win the suit. In many states, the insurance company has to pay the attorney's fees. So make sure if you're in one of the states that doesn't pay attorney fees that you know this so that you understand your financial obligation to pay the attorney. The second option would be hire a public adjuster. A public adjuster is just like a claims adjuster, only their alignment of interest, they represent the insured, the consumer. So you can hire a public adjuster. They typically take 10% cut of the entire claim. And um, and the good public adjusters will get you far more than that. So that not only will you get what, what you need to get the work done, but enough to cover the 10% many times as well, depending on the public adjuster and how they write their estimates and such. And the appraisal clause, the way that works is there's two experts Usually they're um, adjusters or contractors, um, and they do this on a regular basis. I've done almost 2,000 appraisals in 23 years. And so the two appraisers go out. First thing they do is they name a tiebreaker guy known as an umpire, and then the two go out and do a site visit. They take a look at the damage, and then they put together their appraisal, which is like an estimate, their appraisal of the damage. The two appraisers would then sit down and compare their appraisals to see what remains in dispute between the two of them and whatever, you know, three, five, ten line items that are in dispute, they discuss those things and, and see if they can bring the, the, uh, the loss to resolution. If they're able to do that, then they sign the paperwork and the carrier pays. Cool. If they're not able to do that, they involve that third person, the umpire, and then the umpire then brings the appraisal to conclusion. And so that usually costs, you know, uh, depending on, you know, it could take a couple months and, it, you know, a small residential loss, maybe costs a thousand or two thousand dollars to do appraisal loan, something like that. Uh, we're doing a twenty nine million dollar appraisal in Houston right now, and it's probably going to end up costing about fifty thousand dollars to handle that. But it's a twenty nine million dollar loss. So, yeah. Um, so that that particular business owner decided to go to appraisal rather than litigate or hire a public adjuster. All three are legitimate ways to settle claims. That's awesome. No, that's super helpful. Thank you so much. So let's say homeowners sitting there like, wow, this sounds like a lot of work. Is it, do we really need to go this extent? Or like, this just seems like too much. And so that brings us to the first two options. You can hire a substandard contractor to do substandard work on your house, and they'll work for the insurance proceeds that they're trying to get you to settle for. You can always do that. You can get crap work done in your house, and if you want to get crap work done in your house, then knock yourself out. Boom, what a good line. Or you can come out of pocket the difference. So let's say Sam's company's at 50,000 to do the work right, and the insurance company's paying 35. So you can come out of pocket the $15,000 to do the work right. So if you prefer to pay $15,000 rather than making the insurance company fulfill their promise, then knock yourself out. Come out of pocket to 15000 Go get a loan, whatever you want to do. Me? I think that the insurance company ought to fulfill their promises. That's just me. I'm an insurance claims adjuster, and so, of course, I believe the insurance company should fulfill their promise. But it's your decision. So a lot of homeowners, obviously, we've been trained our whole lives that we've got to get three bids, we got to get cheap, we got to get you know, the best bang for our buck. That's just like a buyer's conditioning, right? Are you trying to save, see who can save the insurance company the most amount of money? Boom. Such a good line. Is that what you're trying to do? 
Is that what the consumer should be doing, trying to see who can save the insurance company the most amount of money? Or should the consumer be trying to make sure that all the work is done with materials of like kind and quality to construction best practices? The 10%, the top 10% of contractors do their work at construction best practices. They do exceptional workmanship. The other 90% simply do not. They don't. They don't care about you. They care about collecting the check. It's sad but true in the contracting industry that 90% don't care about the consumer. They care about collecting a check. You want to hire someone in the 10%. That's the reason why you have to do your due diligence and you have to vet the contractor through the referral process. So consumers now stunned with kind of like, wait, what? And to help understand this, either way, the consumer pays what? The deductible. And it's, I, it's important, to, as a contractor, when you're first visiting with the consumer, instead of saying all you have to be out of pocket is your deductible and any upgrades, you don't say that. And see, that's what all the contractors say. Mm. You don't say that. What you say is, provided that the insurance company fulfills their promise to you, all you have to be out of pocket is your deductible and any upgrades. So you're helping condition. Provided that they fulfill their promise to you yes. and pay correctly. If they don't fulfill their promise to you, then you might have to be out more money than the deductible. And see, Love this. You could, this is good. <laughs> it's important that you qualify that, provided that the insurance company does the right thing. Yeah. Because if you don't, they're just looking for like, how do I get my deductible paid for? How do I get like free, free, free? And I wrote a chapter on that. Yes. So if you have so if you as a contractor have a consumer that's trying to persuade you to violate the law. It's a class A misdemeanor to eat deductibles and eat the deductible. Then all you have to do is say, Mrs. Jones, I have a book written by an insurance claims expert, right? And he wrote a chapter about this. If you would do me a favor and take five minutes and read this chapter, I think you'd find it very enlightening. And so she reads my chapter on eating the deductible and she goes, oh, well, I never thought about it this way. Never mind. I'll pay my deductible out of pocket. And see, now... The contractor isn't the one saying these things. You're using third party like third party documentation mm. from an insurance claims expert who wrote a book on the subject. So he must be the authority, the subject matter expert, since he wrote a book on it. Yes. Using props is huge, people. Articles, book chapters, authority, because nobody trusts the sales guys. Sure, because so. you have a financial interest. Of course, you want the price to be high in the consumer's mind. Right. So if the consumer reads something from an insurance claims expert who doesn't have a financial interest in their claim, they're going to give that person the authority and the expertise and they're going to believe them. OK, so let's let's kind of map out. Let's say consumers like I'm not going to read your chapter. Do you have kind of a bullet pointed like here is the reason? Obviously, it's breaking the law to pay the deductible. How do you explain that to them without saying go read the chapter? What's another avenue that you could maybe take? So in our state, I'm in Texas. So what so you relate it to whatever state you're in. In the state of Texas, it's a class A misdemeanor for, for a contractor to eat a deductible. So only criminals commit criminal acts. People who aren't criminals don't do criminal acts. Right? And so if you want to hire a criminal to work on your home, then there's lots of guys out there that are criminals that'll be happy to do that. We're not criminals and we don't commit criminal acts. And if they want to hire a criminal, then they're not your customer. And you move along to and find a customer who is. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of the con uh, states, consumers kind of get bad conditioning. Mm -hmm. And the subpar contractors have conditioned them to say, oh, well, the last guy ate my deductible. Or, hey, there's almost it's like lazy, bad sales reps. And, mm -hmm. and that's what it is. Well, it's, it is laziness. It's learn good sales techniques. To learn to be a good salesperson and value the service you're bringing is going to help you have more confidence to go into the conversation of not having to eat deductibles. And so if your owner of your company or you know, manager is teaching you that, oh, the only way we can sell is by paying people's deductible. 
I would say the only thing you should reply is become a better salesperson, learn better techniques, be have more integrity in yourself to literally say, I'm, I don't, I don't need to be bad. I don't need to go the lazy route, the unethical route, take the high road. And that's what we're trying to get at in this, in this. And it takes a significant, if you're eating the deductible, it takes a significant percentage of your net profit and you're just giving it away. I mean, who wants to take their net profit, which is why you're doing this is to make a profit, right? Who wants to take a, away a significant percentage of their net profit and just give it away and leave that money on the table. Learn how to sell. Yeah, learn how to sell.